Hi, welcome to Viewpoints with Ascend is Travel. I'm your host, Joe Curtis, and with me today is the National Manager of Travel Partnerships with the Avis Budget Group, Greg Shadell. Welcome, Greg. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be here. So, Greg, the whole idea here about Viewpoints is kind of to give Ascendus's viewpoint of the industry. Mm -hmm. We talk to our vendor partners and some other leaders in the travel industry and just kind of get their take on what's going on out there, okay? A lot of changes. So, uh, a big topic that we have that we always address on this show is travel technology mm -hmm. and what's happening in the travel world. So, can you maybe talk a little bit about the latest with Avis Budget Group and what you're seeing out there? Sure. Be glad to. Um, I... I'll back up a little bit. A couple of years ago, we, we decided that we needed to go out there and really kind of see what the travelers were looking for when it yeah. came to the rental process, especially with uh, our uh, Avis Preferred, which is our Bypass the Counter program. Um, and we, it really came down to three different type of clients that we ran into. The first one was, uh, obviously, with Avis Preferred, when you bypass the counter, you, you go to the airport, there's your names up on the board, Yeah. you're in slot J26, so you go there and you get in your car and you drive away. That's typically how it worked. One customer really liked that. They didn't want to have to deal with anything. They don't worry about exchanging cars. They just want to right. get in their car and go. But then there was a second traveler who said, well, I, I want that, but I also want to have the ability to have maybe exchange it if I don't like it, and I don't want to go back to the count. So we set up a product that was called Select and Go, which we've had in place for quite some time, where they could actually go over to this one area and just pick a different car if they wanted to. It would be at no change in price, and it would be equal or higher car group category. Or we even had an area that was, if you wanted to really upgrade, like to a BMW or a convertible. But it, the paperwork would just be taken care of when you drive, drove off. You didn't have to go to the counter. Okay. But then we had the new third type of customer who said, I want to do everything on the phone. Are we, are we talking the millennials here? Yeah, okay. predominantly. All right. All right. Um, they, want to, they don't want to have to deal with anything at all. We created last year what we call the Avis app. And we have, a, right now it's rolled out to 185 global locations. And what the Avis app allows you to do is control the rental experience completely. So once you arrive at the airport, for example, I flew in last night to, uh, into here into Kansas City. So you'll get a push notification on your phone that'll say your car is sitting in slot B13 right. or so. Yep. And here's the car. It'll actually show you a picture of the car. It'll tell you the mileage on the car, everything about it. If you like that, you just say, fine, you just accept it. But you also on the app can say, I think I want to look at something another option. So you just click on change cars and then it'll show you different vehicles that are available for you to rent. So in my case, it showed me a picture of an SUV. I saw that it only had like a thousand miles on it. Well, you know, new car. Yeah. So I just hit that and said, I want that car in instead. And I didn't have to go to the counter to do anything. By the time I got to the airport, which was only a minute or two later off the shuttle bus, the car's right there waiting for me to climb into it. Well, that's interesting. So you're basically taking that whole uh, drop and go approach right to the mobile app. Yeah, exactly. Huh. And and the app is, is it's just not for exchanging your car. If I right. wanted to upgrade to another car, okay. I could have hit upgrade. And then it would have showed me other cars that I could upgrade into, larger car groups, and what the price difference would be on that if we wanted to do that. But the Avis app, too, is just so much more. I mean, with right. the app, you can lock or unlock the car. Let's say you accidentally lock your keys in the car. I do that all the time. You just hit unlock, and it's all connected up. And then you can find through the app uh, the nearest parking, the nearest gas station, if it happens to be a uh, Avis shuttle that's yep. in the area at the airport, it'll tell you the next time it's coming around. You can also be able to go in and look at your profile and make real-time changes in your profile. It's it, and we're just expanding it all the time. It's it's just yeah. a, it's a pretty phenomenal product. And then when you return the car, you can actually just once you drive up, you just can hit return car and get up and walk away because it'll automatically check it in. Of course, it's reading through connect to car. It's sure. it's reading what the mileage is. It's reading what the gas tank is. So there's no question about that. And then you'll receive. Uh, an email with your receipt, generally nice. within minutes. Wow, good piece of technology for sure. It's right? super, yeah. So you touched on it a little bit there with connect to car and mm -hmm. I've been reading some articles about that, and I know Avis has been putting that out there a little bit. Can you talk about that maybe a little bit more in depth as, as what that does? I, I know in the article I was reading, talked a little bit about how it assists you maybe with your management to your fleet that's out there and what's going on and where cars are located and everything else. Right, so, exactly. Yeah, with connect to car it, it's... It not only feeds us the information that I just talked about with the Avis app, but it also allows us to uh, to begin to manage our fleet. I mean, it's it's really on the ground floor of what it's capable of doing. With the app uh, or with the Connect a Car, we actually will begin to see where those cars are located at. 
um, and we can be able to make adjustments in the fleet if we need to. Well, if a car that we thought is going to be coming back at a certain time and we still see it's, you know, 200 miles away, we know it's going to be coming in later on. Interesting. But it really is in, as we go into the future with that, uh, I, I see where we won't maybe necessarily have cars sitting at, typically at a rental location that we always did. There might be cars that if someone's done using it, it might be at a different location. could be at a hotel or somewhere oh. else. It could expand on that. It, it, there's so many capabilities. And where we used to think that those things were maybe years down the road, they really aren't anymore. I mean, yeah. it's just right around the corner. Well, Greg, you're great at switching segments and giving me another end to the next one. So... Let's get into the next one, and that, that is driverless cars. Mm -hmm. And so uh, everyone's talking about what it's going to be like in the future and how driverless cars are going to impact us. I, I thought it was pretty interesting. I had recently talked to the parking spot in one of these segments as well, and I asked them about it, and their kind of outlook on it was a little different one I had never thought of in that mm -hmm. they were saying uh, driverless cars maybe won't impact them but support them. And I was like, I, I don't get it. What are you talking about? And their perspective was that the airports, if all these driverless cars are coming on mm -hmm. to the airport, the congestion impact would be enormous. As you see that right now, nowadays, a lot of people get off before the airport and yeah. they use one of the parking locations, whether it's an economy lot or whether it's the parking spot or something like that, they're getting off and parking. A uh, bunch more of the cars that are entering into the airport get off at the rental car facility. And those mm -hmm. are always before you would go up to the departure gate. So those cars are, are moving off. And so really the only ones you see going up to the gates are the ones that are arrival or departure and picking somebody up. Right. Right. Or maybe the shuttle buses or Which something. Which already causes some congestion it, at airports. They do. Yeah. You yeah. go around LAX or something like that, it's a nightmare, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was a pretty interesting perspective in that they were saying that they might become a staging center in the future for cars. Uh, driverless cars because the airports, there's no way they can handle all of that impact. If the rental cars are impacted, if the parking locations are impacted, mm -hmm. it would be virtually impossible for congestion. So it's kind of neat. What do you think from agent budget's perspective? Have you guys talked about it or what, what are you guys looking at? Yeah, certainly driverless cars are here. And, and uh, I just kind of want to mention, I, I was listening to NPR, National Public Radio, just a month ago, and, and they were talking about the driverless cars. And they were saying children that are born today right most of them may never drive a car because that's how much the driverless market is wow. really going to be here because wow. if you think about it 10 or 15 years ago we were talking about it kind of as a future like you said yeah. in the future like the hovercraft it, it really isn't in the future yeah. anymore i mean driverless cars are here uh, they're already doing them in phoenix in, in fact waymo which operates driverless cars in phoenix which is a uh, a division of Alphabet, which I believe is owned by Google, came to us and said, we'd like you to do the maintenance for our driverless cars because we're really well known it, for right? our maintenance. Wow. I mean, it's interesting. And so we're servicing those cars. So I see that uh, I, at the staging areas, I think is obvious. Taxi cabs do that right now. Most of them sit off airports That's somewhere true. and then they get called in. But um, as far as driverless cars coming into the car rental industry, uh, I I'll take off my Avis budget hat and just kind of talk to you as someone who's been in the industry for quite some time. I definitely, it'll be there. There's no doubt right. about it. I think that we'll be offering that. Um, I, when I think about it, I think there's a certain perspective, though, maybe in the case of liability. Because right now, when you rent a, a, a car, as soon as you drive off the lot, you're responsible for the car. Sure. You're, you're responsible for any damage or an accident occurs. That's your liability. But with the driverless cars, suddenly now the rental car company is driving the car, if That's you think true. about it. Yeah. And so now how does the liability fall into that? And, and, and in some ways, it's a little bit like an Uber or a Lyft, right. but there's just nobody sitting up front. I think those are things that are going to have to be dealt with in the industry. But uh, at the same time, though, if you're just doing appointments downtown or just a, a limited day visit, I think driverless cars will will certainly be there. It's just, it's inevitable. And they'll probably be sitting on our lots and being rented. I, I definitely see that in foreseeable future. Wow, that's interesting. Nice take. Uh, one other product that you've had out there, I think, for a number of years, and I, I remember seeing it, I want to say for the first time, and I might be totally wrong, but six, seven years ago at, uh, I believe it was at Colorado State is where I saw it, but mm -hmm. it was your Zipcar product. Yeah. And you were starting to put that out there. As, and it was almost an idea of ride sharing before ride sharing became cool. Very much Zipcar. so, yeah. So how's that going and how's that product working for you? Well, Zipcar is predominantly, like you said, you saw it at the California, Colorado State. Uh, yeah. Universities are 
our main place where we have our zip cards. Okay. And we also have them too at, at some other locations. So that's, universities though is our predominant customer. In fact, Stanford up in Northern California is our hugest zip car user. They wow. use it for running downtown or, or whatever, sure. the faculty and the students. I'll give a quick example. My son just entered college last year at Southern Oregon University. And of course we're thinking about, okay, we've got to give him a car and it's yep. got to be sitting up there and the weather and all this other stuff and insurance. Well, when we moved him in there, I saw that sitting right outside his dorm were three zip cars. And so I immediately signed my son up because we have a special program for students. And so now when he needs a car, he just walks over to the zip car. He's got a little card, unlocks the car. He gets in. It covers the insurance on the car. It covers the gas on the car. He doesn't have to do anything but just drive it to the store or back. Yeah. It's for our short rentals, like three or four hours or so like that. But it's just, I, I thought to myself, you know, every, every parent should yeah, <laughs> let their kid yeah, use zip car. Because it just, you know, it, it just saves so much in, in their well-serviced vehicles. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's done very well for us, especially like I said on the university front. Wow, that's interesting. Well, you guys are doing a lot between the app and looking at things you got coming down the road and zip car and yeah. everything else, and that's awesome. Great change is good, yeah. you know, and change in this uh, in the travel industry happens all the time. There's no doubt yeah. about it, and you just got to try to keep up with it. But it's uh, the future looks great. In some in some ways, the future is already here. Well, that's awesome. Well, Greg, listen, I appreciate you being here today with us. You guys are a great partner of ours. We really appreciate it, and, and thank you for your take. All right. Thank you. This has been Viewpoints with Ascendus Travel.